Hello students, today we are going to discuss another poem by one of the most famous uh, modern English poets, uh, Dylan Thomas and the title of the poem is A Refusal to Mourn the Death by Fire of a Child in London. Uh, this poem, uh, just like all the poems of uh, Dylan Thomas and uh, many other uh, modern poets uh, like him, uh, it speaks uh, mainly on uh, uh, the loss of humanity due to uh, the, the modernizing of our world or what we call today as modernization uh, um, or uh, as, a, as a continuation of that part, the process of globalization when we see the emergence of global villages but uh, uh, where, where you can connect uh, between two different cities at the two ends of the world but you do not know who your neighbor is. Uh, here in this poem uh, he speaks on how modern um, um, he speaks on uh, the death of a child and uh, uh, very strangely in this poem he says that uh, he is not going to mourn the death of the uh, child over here. Dallan Thomas wrote this poem uh, with reference to the death of a child in London uh, during Second World War and this death had happened uh, because of uh, Nazi Germany's air bombing of London uh, which was uh, very uh, meticulously uh, done uh, during, during that time. And uh, when a fire erupts because of this bombing, uh, a child dies and uh, uh, Dallan Thomas wrote a poem on this. And uh, as the title indicates, the poet here refuses to mourn the death. Why is it so and uh, what is the reason for that? Let us analyze today. This poem is distributed in four stanzas uh, of uh, six lines each and this follows a uh, rhyme scheme of A, B, C, A, B, C. Unlike any other poem which speaks about death, the present poem does not consider death as a horrific thing or as an end of something. Dallan Thomas begins the poem by saying that until three of his conditions are fulfilled, he is not going to mourn the majesty and burning of the child's death. He gives an almighty power to darkness here and uh, which he calls as first mankind making that is the creator of mankind, second bird, beast and flower fathering. Uh, that is one who gives a life to birds, animals and plants and finally he calls uh, darkness as all humbling that is one who makes everyone humble through death. Hence darkness uh, uh, assumes a power or becomes uh, the creator and destroyer of uh, everything in the world. The poet's first condition is that the darkness which has been already called as the creator and the destroyer should tell him with silence at the last light breaking, when the last light uh, will break or the last light uh, will come to this uh, world. That is, it should tell him uh, when, the, uh, when the doomsday uh, will happen. And it should also tell him that uh, uh, the still hour is come of uh, the sea tumbling in a harness. Uh, here the sea is compared to a horse in harness uh, which is rushing forward. A very interesting image. So the poet uh, should be informed by the darkness that a time of stillness has come of uh, has has come for such a beast like rough sea. This is his second condition. The darkness should also tell him one more thing that is when he is going to enter or when he must enter again the round zeon of water bead and the synagogue of the year of uh, of the year of corn. This is his third condition. Let us analyze this. Uh, uh, particular line over here. The word Zion in this line refers to Mount Zion in uh, Jerusalem which is a very holy mountain in Jewish religion and uh, here Jews believe that God resides. Synagogue uh, is the place of uh, Jewish worship and uh, the, the phrase year of the corn is a symbol of fertility and rebirth in Jewish religion. It is called as Shiboleth in Hebrew language. The poet is speaking about his own death here when his soul uh, is supposed to enter Mount Zion and the synagogue of uh, Year of Corn, uh, both among the holiest places for Jewish people. Poet describes uh, the source of uh, life in Mount Zion as a water weed or drop. A drop has neither an end uh, nor a beginning. Hence, it symbolizes uh, the unending cycle of birth which one has, uh, has to enter uh, again and again. Only after all these uh, three conditions are fulfilled, uh, he will let pray or he will allow himself uh, to pray uh, with the shadow of a sound 
or so he is a salt seed in the small valley filled with people in sackcloth and mourn the majesty and burning of the child's death his prayer will be this uh, the shadow of a sound or very slight uh, there is uh, there will be no huge no huge words and uh, no loud noise over here he calls his tears as salt seeds which tells us that they are valuable they are not something uh, that uh, is said for no reason and uh, without any value okay they are valuable the death of the child is glorified with the word majestic and the way its the way of its death is given a special importance he says that uh, it is the burning of the child's death it indicates the pain of the po uh, poet uh, when he speaks about the uh, death of the child uh, which uh, tells us uh, that the child even uh, did not get the chance to die even its death was burned a very uh, horrific uh, uh, idea and a very a, a, a very a very horrific thing uh, really so that according to dalan thomas is not horrific uh and but majestic or magnificent but actually it is a paradox where he is expressing uh, where he is expressing his pain over here the poet says that if he is going to utter some grave truth or uh, do a memorial speech on this occasion then he will be killing the real feelings of people about her death he compares a speech during mourning or funeral to murder of the mankind this is a reference uh, to the artificiality of all these speeches which are uh, done during which are done during uh, Uh, funerals that takes away the dignity from the dead he also says that any allegory of innocence and youth composed for her death would be a blasphemy through the stations of breed or stages of mourning uh, here the word allegory is a uh, uh, it refers to a sad poem uh, written to lament or express grief express uh, grief for a dead person the phrase stations of breed can also be a reference to the stations of cross Uh, the stations of cross uh, is the various stages of suffering undergone by jesus christ uh, during his crucifixion and once again that happened in the land of uh, jews so we can connect uh, the idea of uh, jewish images uh, to the crucifixion of christ over here in some way so any allegory according to dalan thomas uh, written on the child's death would be a blasphemy or extreme disrespect from the religious view point in the last stanza dalan thomas calls the child as uh, london's daughter and then describes the way in which uh, she has her final rest uh, he says that she lies deep with the, the first dead which is a reference to all those who have died earlier it can also mean those who have died uh, due to the second world war before the child the poem becomes a bit creepy a bit horrific when he says that uh, she is robed in the long fronts Uh, which is a reference to other dead people or in another case uh, to a uh, worms and uh, he also says that she is covered with grains beyond age uh, the dark veins of her mother and uh, the grains beyond age is uh, the reference to soil or the dust which is ageless uh, we will all turn into dust and uh, mix with soil after our death so it is uh, in a way telling the reality of human life and uh, uh, the uh, one more phrase the dark veins of her mother is refers to the layers of soil or the roots of trees uh, which can be called as uh, the veins or blood vessels of her mother that is the earth here the poet says then uh, that the child is uh, lying secret uh, by the unmoaning water of the riding thames uh, river thames uh, which is considered as the life giver to the city of london represents nature here the poet is trying to make us understand that even the nature does not mourn any death because it is perfectly a natural thing and also that it is useless to assume that uh, uh, death as an end so all mourning is a mourning is a sham and uh, a waste that is why uh, we will not mourn the child's death uh, that is uh, that is why he will not mourn the child's death until the doomsday has come or uh, the day of his death that is until his death he will not mourn it here this particular phrase uh, once again refers to the pain po uh, the poet feels for uh, the death of such a young child by that horrific bombing done by the nazis uh, uh, his grief is so much uh, that he cannot uh, shed any tears for it he he cannot cry for it
It's not that the poet does not want to mourn. He cannot mourn because his, po his uh, pain cannot be uh, put out. The poem ends uh, finally with a serious note uh, with these lines. After the first death, there is no other. The final line tells us uh, how we become numb and insensitive to the horror of uh, death after repeated exposure to it. This can also be a reference to how insensitive people had become to death uh, during the Second World War. First death, uh, uh, from another point, can also be a reference to the murder of Cain, Adam's death by his own brother due to the latter's jealousy. This is a this is a story that we find in Bible, and Bible calls it as the first death. So, uh, in the poem, uh, we see a poet expressing his grief for the uh, death of a child in a unique way saying that he cannot he will not mourn because his uh, pain is so great and in another way finding a philosophical answer for death and saying that death is a natural thing even the nature does not mourn for it and uh, uh, by that and also by his final line saying that after the first death there is no other uh, he ends the poem uh, saying that repeated death or death like uh, such a young child uh, will make us or will stop our tears uh, for f any future deaths. With that, it, uh, he ends his poem uh, once again criticizing uh, the insensitive of humanity towards uh, such a uh, uh, young child's life being taken away by uh, so-called political reasons or uh, uh, wars between countries. That's what uh, we can see over here. Uh, we'll end for the day. Uh, in, um, in the next class, we'll meet with another poem. Thank you.